at the hill fort, but this is something completely different, isn't it? It is different. It's actually still in the hill fort, yeah. but as you say, it's a, it's, a, it's a different kettle of fish completely here. What, what we think we're standing on is the, the, the mot, the mound of a, an earthen timber Norman castle. Right, so we've come forward in time we again, have. and this, this is medieval. That's right, the, the pendulum is swinging. We're back, right. we, we, we're back in the Middle Ages. Uh, it was a, a simple, expedient way to throw up the castle yeah. quickly, we think. And there are all sorts of ideas. I mean, there is a suggestion, for example, that there might have been a Roman watchtower up here. Uh, make perfectly good sense. Good place for it. Uh, at the end of the day, there's really only one way to find out. But there are still more interpretations. Mm. Are there not, Richard? Yes, there is uh, uh, other interpretations. Um, as with any prominent Welsh hill, there's a whole bunch of legends wrapped around it. There's the legend of the Druid curse up here, that if you disturb the mound, a, a swarm of bees will attack you. But there's also uh, the association with the name Cumbran, and uh, Bran of the Mabinogion, uh, from the story of Branwen, daughter of Chlis, and towards the end of the story, his head gets buried on a prominent white hill facing France. So, mm. take your pick, Ray. Well, oh, there we are. Uh, I, I don't see any bees today, but uh, mm. again, we're not really disturbing the, uh, the mound, are we? They uh, could be bad news for archaeologists, those bees. I, I suppose it could be, yeah. But I'm inclined to, to take a chance anyway, because I think there's a, there's a huge case for additional excavation. Mm. On, on this site. Not only would it uh, tell us uh, about this mound, but it would also, if we targeted the right areas, tell us about what's happening in the hill fort itself, tell us more about those Silures, and that would be a very, very good be thing to do. Very, very useful. But there are other ways of finding out about it, aren't there, Richard? I mean, you've been doing some surveying, which has been very useful. Yeah, we, we um, commissioned a LIDAR survey of the area from the Environment Day Agency's Trade in Arm Geomatics. Uh, which is basically a, an aeroplane flying over the whole area and taking laser photography and mapping the topography of the ground. Um, very useful tool. It's thrown up a whole bunch of new archaeological sites because, of course, you can see through the tree cover. Yeah, indeed, and your LIDAR images are really very, very good. And it, it, it seems to be suggesting some things about the hill fort itself as well, doesn't it? There's a few features within the hill fort that certainly need investigation, and the LIDAR is, uh, will be a very useful tool. But there is one thing about it, and even before any excavation, you can see one of the, the reasons that this site is so important. We've been doing work on things like line of sight, mm. you know, what you can see from the top of these hill forts. Mm. And can tell you with absolute confidence. Uh, in southeast Wales, you won't go to the top of a hill fort from which you can't see at least one, and usually several other hill forts. And usually, one of those hill forts will be Tumbalum. Absolutely, uh, Tumbalum will be one of them as a rule. Uh, but but from here, I mean, you can see some wonderful sort of line of sight. The, there's the guy down there. There's Lodge Hill over there. There's a suggestion that there's some sort of triangular relationship. Uh, it's a fascinating area, and you can certainly see why such a prominent point mm. as this. Uh, it dominates the line, landscape, it would have dominated mm. the Iron Age landscape. Is Do it you? telling you anything about the Silures and how they worked as a tribe? I tend to think it probably does, because not only does the line of sight confirm that intervisibility, but I think it's also suggesting perhaps clustering of these hill forts, mm. and that might be telling us something about a, a clan-based uh, mm. confederal mm. sort of society. Mm. Okay, well from here you can cut down across the fields and get back to Green Meadow or you can carry on with us going forward in time and go and have another look at the Middle Ages. Mm.